We're here with East Chicago Utility Director Al Velez. Al, can you summarize what's going on here in Marktown? Yeah, there was an accident yesterday about 2, two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, uh, BP uh, Amico was transporting a vessel and it tipped and fell on our fire hydrant. Uh, so the residents of Markstown either have no water or very low water uh, as, a, as uh, some of the industry also doesn't have any water or very low water. Um, we can't do anything. All our guys are here. We've been standing by since last night uh, trying to repair it, but we can't repair it until uh, uh, BP actually removes that vessel off of our fire hydrant. And we can't also shut down the water and the fire hydrant continues to leak until uh, uh, BP moves the vessel because that that shutoff valve is also under that vessel. It's a 150 foot long by 15 foot diameter vessel uh, that they were transporting for their new facility. Uh, I know that the councilmen have Robert Garcia and Medina and, and uh, our emergency management, Herbie Cruz and Diane from the health department, they were out here last night passing out water to the folks. Um, uh, we were out here to midnight last night. We've got the uh, center open 24 hours. We're manning it, make sure these folks get water. We believe we'll get this thing fixed depending on the weather. BP is telling us that uh, they can lift that vessel off sometime this afternoon. As soon as that vessel is lifted, our guys can go in there and repair the line. Uh, three to five hours, we believe we can get this thing fixed. Um, but in the meantime, if the weather turns bad, BP says they have to ab abandon the, uh, the uh, lifting of the vessel. So we've, we've uh, told BP that these residents can't go another day without water. It's a health and safety issue. So they would put them up in hotels for the night. So we're hoping it doesn't get to that point. So we're hoping be uh, uh, best case scenario that we can get this thing fixed within the next four or five hours. Now the reason the water department can't get in there and shut the water down is because the vessel is actually on the shutoff valve, right? Yeah, the vessel is actually on the shutoff valve and our fire hydrant, which continues to leak. Um, I don't know if your crews have gone out there, you guys go out there and you can actually film it from the back end. Uh, but until they do that, we can't get to it. Like I said, we've had men standing by all night in case they were able to do get this thing done and they haven't been able to get it done yet. So. Um, actually, the councilman is, the councilman is here. Uh, Robert Garcia has been here all night. He's he's had a briefing also from uh, BP. He can he can kind of tell you what's been going on also. Thanks, Al. Okay. Well, hello, Councilman Robert Garcia. You've been here all day and uh, all night yesterday. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, concerns of the residents here? Uh, the concerns of the residents has been drinking water and um, also bathing water, uh, and then how long uh, are they going to be without pressure? And what have they been doing to uh, make sure that we have water here for these residents? Well, uh, we've been in communication with um, BP Amico. Um, the residents of Marshall gathered together, and uh, a lot of residents have been helping me out and uh, helping BP out to identify the senior citizens and uh, the handicapped people that need water. And what's, what's the estimated time that they're going to be able to fix this? Well, barring uh, good weather, uh, we're looking at two or three in this afternoon, but the wind has to be down and, and, and no thunderstorm. So um, a good scenario is two or three o'clock and then uh, maybe four or five o'clock. So it depends on, on the weather. Thank you very much. Council President Rich Medina, can you talk to us a little bit about um the commitment of the police department and what you guys are doing and some of the safety concerns that you guys might have? Uh, the uh, police department has been here. We've, we've had extra manpower here to assist with the traffic situation, uh, to try and inform some of the, uh, the community here, the residents, and let them, you know, keeping them abreast of uh, exactly what we're doing uh, and exactly what the whole city is doing. And we've had uh, good cooperation, not only from the police department, but the fire department, the health department, and as you can see, we're trying to uh, make some modifications to restore some of the water pressure so that you know it wouldn't be a health hazard but everybody's been working together and, I, and I'm, I'm really proud of our, our our department heads everybody's doing their part trying to correct this problem and see how how soon and how fast we can rectify it permanently well thank you uh, some of your officers were talking about the rerouting of traffic what is the rerouting of traffic here on Dickey Road? We, we are still currently uh, waiting for <laughs> what you call the uh, rush hour, and uh, we're going to modify it as we go along. Right now, we have the closure at Dickey and Riley uh, due to that uh, to the catastrophe there. Something could have been even even a lot worse, and uh, thankfully, it, it's only at this point a broken hydrant, and uh, 
if Mother Nature uh, helps us out, we, we, could, we could solve this pretty quick. But nobody was hurt or is in any imminent danger, right? No, no, not at this time. The only, the only problem we have is trying to get to the, uh, the shut-off valve for the water hydrant so that we could, you know, get people their, their water pressure back. Thanks, Councilman. All right, we're here with Lourdes Lulu Hicks, and she's a volunteer here at the Markstown Community Center. And uh, Lourdes, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on and your role in, in this involvement here with the vessel. Okay, um, yesterday I got a phone call from Robert Garcia, um, asked me to come over here and um, help him out with distributing water for our local residents due to the, some type of water uh, valve or water leak that was, we have over here on Dickey Road. And um, what I did was I got here about yesterday, about 8 o'clock. I was helping him and Herbie distribute water to the residents here, letting them know basically how many senior citizens we had, um, that they were unable to come out and get their water themselves. So Robert Garcia, amongst many other people, um, participated in you know going and delivering to the seniors and the disabled. And um, I've been here since pretty much 8 o'clock last night, um, still passing out uh, five gallons of water for us to be able to flush the toilets, uh, cases of water for um, the families to be able to drink. And I've been here with Judy Hicks. She's been here with me. Um, we've had Kim Rodriguez here, Robert Garcia, Herbie Cruz, Aaron Martinez, I believe is the officer's name. A lot of officials, Judah Parks came out. Um, a lot of people have come out and showed support and concern for the residents and just been keeping us updated. Um, I've also been interpreting for the people who don't speak English. Um, and then, you know, just basically that's what we're doing here. Lulu, what can you tell us about the water uh, boil advisory. Um, they are advising us to boil the water just for safety precautions. They said that um, because the water pressure is so low that they would uh, prefer us to boil it. They uh, came out and distributed these these flyers and came and dropped a, a bunch of them off here for us to distribute to the residents, letting us know that um, they want us to boil it for five minutes before drinking. And, and that's probably if we run out of this, and I don't see that, they've been bringing this nonstop since yesterday. Yeah. So, you know, they steadily they've been bringing the five gallons and the, and the cases of water. So, like I said, we, we've been pretty much um, advising everybody to boil the water just for safety precautions. We are able to take showers in the water, um, wash dishes and everything. It's just our pressure is so low that it that, that's pretty much where our stopper is at. It's just the pressure itself. So there's no imminent danger. This is just for precautionary measures, which is pretty right. pretty common, right? Right. That, to, to the best of my knowledge, that is what we were all informed, that there is no immediate danger on this, that it's just a safety precaution. Well, thank you for your dedication, your commitment to East Chicago, Lulu, and uh, thanks for your volunteerism. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. This is Damian Rico at the Marktown Community Center reporting for ECTV.